morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We want to be your go-to source for all things nutrition. Or number 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, formulation, skin health questions, our truth skin health products, success stories, or if you just want to be part of the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible at 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear recommended or advertised on the program, you can check out our websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can purchase longevity products right off the website, or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. If you're an entrepreneur or entrepreneurially minded, if you want to start yourself a business for a one-time $25 fee, you can have yourself your own longevity business and make your own hours and work out of the home, quit your day job maybe, make as much money or as little money as you want, earn all, tax, earn all the tax benefits associated with having your own business, and of course, help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, or Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Healthy Start Pack, Fucoid Z, Ultimate Nightly Essence, all our longevity products really sell themselves. Once people try the Beyond Tangy Tangerine or the Healthy Start Pack and they notice results for themselves, they'll be believers as I was a believer. I was skeptical about the longevity products. I'm a pharmacist and I'm a scientist. I'm always skeptical about things until I see the results for myself and I saw the results for myself. I saw people getting off their meds. I saw people losing weight. I saw people feeling better. I saw the results for myself. That's how I got on board with longevity 20 years ago and probably you'll see the same thing. Check it out for yourself. Call 866-735-2470, order Longevity products, or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. Also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products, Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, oil, silicon, propylene, glycol, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products. Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Serum, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and our Truth Balm are all up at truthtreatments.com. Okay, so I want to finish up talking, uh, finish up with our discussion on honey, and then we'll move to another phytonutrient-rich bee product that has some interesting medicinal properties. This is all in the, in the name of phytonutrients, specifically the phenolic acids. We talked about the lignans, and we talked about the still beans, resveratrol being the classic example. We've been talking about the polyphenols. Our next phytonutrient is my favorite and the most abundant of all the phytonutrients, and that's the bioflavonoids. We have been talking about the phenolic acids. The phenolic acids are rich, are found in, in really in dense quantities in spices. Spices are amazing, amazing nutrient substances. Cloves and peppermint. Cloves are the highest, uh, the, uh, have the most polyphenols of any of the spices. In fact, I think cloves have the most polyphenols of any of any foods per gram for gram. Cloves, is, cloves uh, have a long history for be, as being used in, uh, in the world of pharmacy. Cloves have analgesic properties, numbing properties. Chocolate's a great source of polyphenols. 
This is what gives cocoa powder and chocolate, or, or some of the stuff that gives cocoa and chocolate, uh, uh, dark chocolate particularly, its medicinal properties. There's lots of things in chocolate, but the polyphenol content is especially high in cocoa powder and in dark chocolate. Flaxseed's got polyphenols in it. Yesterday we talked about honey. I love honey. Powerful, powerful, powerful medicine. It's anti-atherogenic. It helps diminish plaques in the arteries, that is. It may have anti-cancer properties. It's, uh, it's uh, an immune regulator, supports the immune system. It's a source of B vitamins, enzymes, and of course, it's a great source of polyphenol, specifically phenolic acid and the bioflavonoids. It's an antioxidant, it's a natural preservative, and this is one of its most notable, uh, notable features. It's antibiotic, antimicrobial, antifungal, and preservative properties, which are at least partially the result of its phenolic acid content. The phenolic acids make honey so resistant to bacterial degradation, so antimicrobial, that jars of honey have been known to last thousands of years without spoiling. Bacteria cannot live in honey. Has anybody ever heard of honey going bad? or honey going rancid or honey oxidizing. I remember a couple years ago, they found a vessel of honey in an Egyptian tomb that was dated back to 1000 BC. It was buried with a pharaoh, and this 3,000-year-old honey was not only perfectly edible, this 3,000-year-old food was perfectly edible. Not, but it was also, according to the researchers, quite delicious. Can you imagine this? A 3,000-year-old food that was not only stable and edible, but still delicious after 3,000 years. That's amazing. The phenolic acids in honey are so important, and the, the preservative properties of these phenolic acids are so important that there's actually artificial synthetic derivative analogs that are used industrially. In other words, phenolic acid derivatives have been used uh, or manufactured in factories as preservatives for uh, leveraging, exploiting the antibacterial properties, the antifungal properties of these uh, phenolic acids. These ubiquitous uh, phenolic acids that are found everywhere, or especially concentrated in honey, are actually sources of something called parabens. Now, I don't want to say sources. Uh, the parabens, everybody's heard of methylparaben, ethylparaben. These are food preservatives and cosmetic preservatives that are just found everywhere. These parabens are analogs. They're very similar to the phenolic acids that are found in honey. In other words, chemists have taken the phenolic acids that are found in honey and kind of tweaked them around and made artificial, uh, artificial versions of them. And that's what the parabens are. The problem with the parabens, and you may have heard of the problems with parabens, are very, they're very toxic. When I was working with parabens and when I worked for Blistex and when I was working in the pharmacy, I, I used to have to use parabens. I'd wear a mask and gloves when I had to work with the parabens. The same stuff that's in your cosmetics, most cosmetics, same stuff that's in food. Problem with these parabens, which are derived or at least mimics of the phenolic acids that are found in honey. The phenolic acids in honey are completely non-toxic. Phenolic acids are 100% non-toxic at the levels that they're found in nature. The problem when you synthesize them is they're out of context. You take the phenolic acids out of these things and you tweak them around and you make mimics of them and analogs, they're out of context. They don't have the balancing molecules that are found in their natural state. Now they're just super purified drug versions of these phenolic acids and they're thousands of times more concentrated than mother nature intended them to be and they are potentially poisonous. And that's why when you're working with the parabens, you only use 0.1 or 0.01 or 0.05%. Very, very small quantities of these things. According to the Environmental Working Group, Studies have shown that preserve, uh, paraben preservatives are xenoestrogens. That is, they're fake estrogens. They act like estrogen. Remember, these phenolic acids and these polyphenols have a lot of similarities to estrogen. In foods, they're not really a problem. But when you start to extract them and make analogs of them and make mimics of them, yes, they can be a serious problem, according to the working group. They may reduce muscle mass, increase body fat, cause male, male breast growth. The uh, Environmental Protection Agency has linked the parabens to uh, metabolic problems, developmental issues, hormonal issues, neurological issues, as well as cancer. Other studies have linked the parabens to tumors of the breast. Nasty stuff, the parabens. That's why I don't use any preservatives in my Truth Skin Health products. I, I wonder sometimes about if we're getting a lot, of, a lot of our cancers and a lot of our illnesses are really from exposure to preservatives. I wonder about, about the impact of these things. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We will return right after this. Okay, we are back 
on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you if you have questions about the Ingevity products or formulations, ingredients, or anything we're speaking about here today, or if you have a success story you'd like to share. We love hearing those. Or if you just want to be part of the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products that you hear advertised or recommended on the program, head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. And if you'd like to look at our Truth Skin Health products, we actually have a special running on our Truth Serum. You might want to check that out at truthtreatments.com. Truth uh, Serum, Truth Omega-6, Healing Cream, Truth Balm, and Truth Retinol 5% Gel. Truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we're talking phenolic acids, we're talking honey. Honey's loaded with all kinds of active ingredients, not just the phenolic acids. You get enzymes, the B-complex, but the phenolic acids are really very fascinating. The antimicrobial properties of honey, which are well known, are in large part due to the phenolic acids, specifically the phenolic acids derivatives that we talked about before we went to break. Phenolic acid derivative called parabens is used everywhere in the cosmetics world as well as in the food world. Also, if you've heard of benzoic acid, sometimes you'll see that in sodas and other food products, or sometimes you'll see something called sodium benzoate. That's a derivative of a phenolic acid. Benzoic acid is a type of phenolic acid. So these phenolic acids have been recognized for their antibacterial and antimicrobial properties by the industrial world. The problem is, is when you take them out of context, when you take these things out of the foods, they don't have the balancing molecules. They're not natural any longer. And even though they may be derived naturally or they're analogs or mimics of natural chemicals, they have toxic profiles that these natural compounds do not. There's no toxicity to honey. There's no toxicity to the benzo benzoates or the benzoic acid that's found in honey or the phenolics that are found in honey. But there is toxicity associated with the parabens big time. It's thought to be associated with cancer, neurological disorders, hormonal disorders. There have been studies that have linked it to breast cancer. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, there is a breast cancer link. Other studies have linked the parabens to tumors, uh, to breast cancer tumors, prostate cancer issues. According to recent research published in the March 2012 issue of the Journal of Applied Toxicology, the presence of parabens in 99% of breast cancer patients has been noted. That is, 99% of breast cancer tissue sampled had parabens in it. Now, I'm not saying that necessarily means that there's a causal relationship, but it's certainly something to be concerned about. And I wonder, I don't see how if you rub a paraben or any kind of preservative on your skin once a day, twice a day, three times a day for decades, and that's what most of us are doing if we're using average skin, if we're using typical skincare products, we're rubbing preservatives, toxic preservatives, cancer-causing preservatives on our skin every day, multiple times a day for years and decades. How could that not have an, how could that not cause a problem? Preservatives are by definition cytotoxic. They kill cells. They're toxic to cells. We are cells. So it has to have some kind of impact, and I, I can't help but believe that uh, our epidemic of cancers and even chronic degenerative diseases are at least somewhat related to this uh, ubiquitous exposure that all of us are subjecting ourselves to uh, preservatives. Honey is really complex stuff. It's got over 200 nutritionally valuable substances, sugars, phenolic acids, flavonoids, amino acids, uh, enzymes, vi uh, uh, vitamins. There's all kinds of things in, uh, in honey. The phenolic acids that are in honey, in addition to being at least possibly being associated with reducing diseases, cancers, and, and uh, heart disease, are also anti-diabetic, in addition to being antioxidant and uh, cardioprotective. There's a relative of honey that's used by bees to build their hives. And this is really interesting stuff. It's called propolis. Propolis is a Latin term for supporting the city. Propolis. Polis means city. Propolis, supporting the city. Propolis is a type of bee cement or bee glue. It's mostly made up of resin, bee saliva, beeswax, and all of this stuff. Is, I think there's a little bit of honey in propolis. All of this stuff provides a stickiness that keeps beehives intact. It's used to seal cracks. How smart are bees? Bees are the most incredible insects. All insects are incredible, but bees are so smart. They actually, have you ever seen these bee dances that bees do to communicate to other bees where nectar and where flowers are? They'll actually do these communicating dances. 
YouTube bee dance. It's absolutely mind blowing. Bees have so many interesting and fascinating qualities. In addition to the bee dancing, they actually will make these medicinal compounds, not for us necessarily, but for them. Propolis is not just bee glue, but it's also bee medicine. It keeps the hive free of infection. It's antimicrobial. It's antibacterial. So in addition to protecting the hive, in addition to uh, uh, fixing the hive, bee cement, how the heck do bees know how to do this? They'll actually take resin, put it in their little bee mouths, and somehow mix it all up with some beeswax and honey and patch up the hive. Bee propolis has had a reputation throughout history for being this magical medicinal substance. And it's, it's a magical medicinal substance for bees too. It cleanses the beehives. It, it keeps the beehives free of infection. It can even prevent the rotting of large animals that get their way into the, that make their way into the hive and get stung to death. Bees can't really drag a mouse out of the beehive. They'll sting the, the mouse or the lizard or whatever it is. They'll sting it to death, and then this rotting corpse will be in the beehive. Well, guess what? The propolis keeps the, keeps the, uh, the uh, dead animal from, from putrefying in the hive. They call a bee propolis sour honey, and it's been used uh, to treat, uh, it's, I'm not saying it is a cancer treatment, but it's been used that way. Bee propolis is also gives the bees energy. It gives the bees stamina. As far as we go, as far as human beings go, propolis has got a long-standing tradition of being a valuable medicinal substance, a nutritional substance even. It's used to treat skin infections, digestive disorders. It's an anti-inflammatory. It's a pain reliever for aches and pains for thousands of years. The Roman scholar Plinius, he talked about uh, drawing out splinters with propolis, reducing swelling caused by stings and caused by uh, infections. Arab doctors in the Middle Ages used to use it to cleanse infections. In Europe, in the Middle Ages, it was used to uh, soothe and accelerate the healing of, uh, of wounds. Recently, it's been touted, reported to have anti-cancer properties. And this is, I will say, controversial. Not everybody agrees. But as it turns out, there's a phenolic acid in propolis, not surprisingly, propolis being at least partially derived from honey. There's a phenolic acid called CAPE, C-A-P-E. Caffeic acid phenethyl ester, C-A-P-E. And according to an article published in the May 2012 edition of the journal Cancer Prevention Research, quote, CAPE from, uh, from propolis has been shown to have anti-mitogenic, which means it protects the DNA, anti-carcinogenic, and other beneficial medicinal properties. That's from the journal uh, Cancer Prevention Research. This was a study that was published from the University of Chicago. They studied propolis, propolis-derived CAPE for prostate cancer. They found it inhibited the growth of prostate cancer cells. When small doses of CAPE were given to mice with prostate cancer, tumor growth slowed by 50%. And tumors completely stopped growing when the mice were dosed with CAPE every day. The scientists in the article concluded that CAPE, quote, might be a potentially useful therapeutic for prostate cancer treatment, unquote. According to another study, this March 2009, from the journal Phytotherapy Research, CAPE-based propolis was shown to completely suppress the growth of a specific type of brain tumor. Researchers concluded that certain propolis products and CAPE, the phenolic acid that's found in propolis, could be potentially useful for the treatment of breast and prostate cancer as well as brain tumors. That is pretty amazing stuff for something that's completely non-toxic. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll continue talking phenolic acids and uh, propolis and phytonutrients tomorrow on the bright side. I also want to talk about my all-time favorite spice, which is a wonderful source of phenolic acids. Also great for diabetics. We'll talk about that one tomorrow as we continue talking phytonutrients on the bright side. 844-236-6010. 6010 is our number, and we will get your calls here in just a minute. Uh, I want to read a couple stories here that uh, got off the news. This one from the Journal of Aging and Physical Activity. Yoga helps preserve muscle mass in older women, study says. A new study by the University of Connecticut finds that practicing yoga may improve protein utilization among older women, leading to the maintenance of muscle at a time in life when muscle mass is common. Every day, it seems like, certainly every week, there's a new study that comes out about 
the importance and the benefits of doing yoga, regular yoga practice. You don't need to have a, you don't need to be all, you know, get, have a yoga mat and have yoga outfits and do yoga classes. You can just do some good stretching. Get on YouTube and look up some yoga stretches. Five minutes in the morning is really all you need. Now, as far as stretching goes, it's not just a, stretching isn't just to make yourself feel comfortable. Stretching is amazing for helping build muscle, for helping improve the blood flow to connective tissue. And according to this study, stretching via yoga can also help improve protein utilization, that is in terms of building muscle. All right, let's see if I, uh, let's, I think we'll hit the phones here. We got one line open, by the way, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. Let's go to Wesley in Idaho. Good morning, my friend Wes. What's going on, bro? Greetings, uh, and I appreciate your observations. What can you comment about Frank's sign, a crease in the earlobe? Uh, having some kind of indication as heart to disease. Heart, heart disease. Heart yeah. disease. And also bioacoustics. Uh, can you comment on that one? Of us? Yes. I have a couple comments about that. First of all, we've been, you know, we've been talking this whole, I don't know, probably six months, maybe more, maybe eight months about the importance of connective tissue. In fact, we really got into talking about the polyphenols and the phytonutrients because we were talking about estrogen, and estrogen is very important when it comes to connective tissue. I have said this before, and I'll say it again. There's nothing, nothing, nothing more important in the world of health, in the world of physiology, in the world of biology and biochemistry as far as how healthy or not healthy we are, how aged or not aged we are than the connective tissue. It makes up 30% of the body, and it is extremely underappreciated, unless you've been listening to this program. The earlobe is largely made up of connective tissue, and there's a very important connective tissue relationship to the heart, and this is underappreciated. We're always, you know, uh, cardiologists don't talk about the connective tissue, they talk about heart cells, but the fact of the matter is, is that the cardiocytes, the heart cells, rest on a framework, a skeleton, literally, there's a heart skeleton made of connective tissue. That heart skeleton, like all connective tissue, feeds the heart cells. This is so important. The connective tissue is not just there to connect. It's not just there to, to act as a framework. It feeds the cells. Without the connective tissue, uh, the, with, when the connective tissue doesn't have an ability or gets clogged up or somehow is not able to feed the cells, the cells get sick. All disease is cell disease, right? Cell disease manifests itself as starvation, suffocation, and toxification. It is the job of the connective tissue to feed the cells. It is the job of the connective tissue to oxygenate the cells. It is the job of the connective tissue to detoxify the cells. When the connective tissue breaks down, the cells get sick. And that occurs everywhere in the body, and it will occur in the heart. So the connective tissue in the ear is sort of like, a, because the connective tissue is a unified system, the connective tissue in the ear can tell you about what's happening in the connective tissue in the rest of the body. Does that make sense how I explain that? The connective hey. tissue in the ear is like a diagnostic tool. It's like a periscope. It's like a telescope into the inside of the body. And this is why it is thought, and I, I can't say that I know this for sure, but it makes sense that if you have a crease in the ear, which is a type of connective tissue defect in the ear, it's likely you'll have a connective tissue defect in the rest of the body because the connective tissue is a unified whole, and that can impact the heart. And that is the logic between the, rela uh, the relationship between ear creases and, uh, and heart disease. Now, as far as bioacoustic goes, this is another very underappreciated aspect of health and wellness and biology, the relationship between sound and biology, the relationship between sound and life. You know, in the beginning, there was the Word, and the Word was God, right? That's not just airy-fairy Bible gobbledygook. You know, there's a science called cymatics. Have you ever heard of cymatics? C-Y-M-A-T-I-C-S. Have you ever heard of this, Wes? Cymatics. Cymatics is the study of how the physical world changes from sound, and they can actually take sound waves and uh, with them uh, and amplify them and, and put them on a, through a speaker, and have that speaker over a plate of sand. And by changing the frequencies of that sound wave, they can create different pictures in the sand, and they can create some pretty darn beautiful pictures in the sand, like incredible, incredible things. Sound can change the movement of molecules. Sound affects the movement of cells. Sound affects everything. This is why our, our languaging is so important and why it's so important to pay attention to what you say. You know, you ever hear of this book, the really interesting book called Hung by the Tongue? 
And it's all about the relationship of, of, of the words we use to whether or not we have a good life or bad life. So sound is incredibly important. Its relationship to biology is very important, and that's what bioacoustics is. And it's really, really important science that needs to be, it, you know, in, in the, the new age of medicine, the 20, when we finally reach, uh, leverage our understandings of science in medicine, medicine is still stuck in the 19th century, in the 18th century, and that's why we think it's okay to cut out organs or poison cells or electrocute the heart to get better because we're still stuck in this primitive model. But when medicine finally catches up to science, we will be using things like bioacoustics to modify the health of the body. So I'm a big believer in, in, in the science of bio, bioacoustics to answer your question. As far as ear creases go, there may be some legitimacy to that, uh, that uh, idea or that uh, concept, that theory, that there's a relationship between heart disease and ear creases. Thanks for bringing that up, uh, Wes. You, yeah, any, can yeah? Please, can I comment? You, you paint beautiful pictures with words. Ben. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Wes. I appreciate that, man. Have a beautiful day, okay? Good, good to talk you. to you again. Thanks, Wes. All right. Love my smart, bright side listeners. If you're listening to this program, you guys, you are the cream of the crop. If you understand, if you understand even 10% of the stuff we talk about here in this program, let alone uh, all the stuff we talk about, because this is, this is, you don't hear this stuff on regular health shows, regular nutrition shows. Anyway, 844-236-6010. Let's go to Alaska and welcome our friend Elaine to the bright side. What's going on, Elaine? Hey, good morning, Ben. This is a great show. Very fascinating. Thank you. I took you. an awesome uh, fascial counter strain class this weekend for physical therapy and the crease in the ear, and it's, it, they've mapped out the fascia in the cranium. And how Say that one more time, Elaine. I, I didn't quite catch that. Yeah, I, I took a continuing ed this weekend on fascial counter strain. We fascial talked, counter strain, is that where you kind of stretch out the fascia somehow? What, what is well, that, that exactly? I've talked to you about it before. It, it's basically the, the cranium. They've mapped out, uh, Brian Tucky and Tim Hodges, their physical therapists, have mapped out on the cranium and the fascial connections to the rest of the body. And it's just fascinating because where that ear crease is, right on the cheekbone, on that zygomatic arch, is a connection to the heart. Oh, how interesting. Yeah, the, that's, the, that's the thing about the fascia and the connective tissue. It's all one unif unified whole. So certain parts can allow you to either diagnose or manipulate or work with other parts. So you don't have to go into the heart. You can actually work with the ear. That's how acupuncture works. All right, hang on, Elaine. we got to take a break, okay? We'll finish up when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. Got a couple lines open, 844-236-6010. We're talking to Elaine in Alaska. Um, go ahead, Elaine. You were, ta you were talking about this fa fascial counter strain. What exactly is that? Yeah, uh, fascial counter strain was originally developed by uh, Dr. Jones. He was a, a DO, a, a doctor of osteopathic medicine in the 1950s, and it has just morphed and changed. And well, evolved. technically, what is it exactly? Tell me just what it, it is, is succinctly. It is, yeah, basically a technique, a, a manual therapy technique that takes, there's something called tone. Tone is how you're able to sit in your chair and not fall over, but sometimes we get aberrant or excessive amount of tone in either the fascia of the vessels. Of like the a tightening? Leg. It tightens up is what you're saying? Yeah, like a tightening. And it's a technique that is so powerful and it will unwind Got it. that tone. So, so counter strain, the, meaning the strain is the tone and it counters the, the, it counters the tightening, the tension, if you will. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. got it. Okay, cool. That makes sense because as we get older and as we as our body starts to break down, one of the ways all the breakdown and the aging manifests in the connective tissue is as a contraction and as a tightening. And when we're under stress, that happens a lot too. So excessive amounts of cortisol can cause that. So that makes a lot of sense. Basically, it's a kind of relaxation strategy or, or right. manipulation. All right, so what's going on? I got a bunch of calls here, my dear, I want to get to. So what's going on? How can we help you? What I'm calling for originally is uh, for my mother-in-law. I uh, love her dearly, and she's in her 70s. Um, a few years back, she had uh, necrotizing fasciitis. Okay. And she ended up having nine surgeries to get all of that out. Hmm. Uh, she just physically hasn't quite recovered. She okay. just started doing um, the tangy tangerine. You said she's 70? 
In her 70s. In yeah. her 70s. Okay. Yeah. So, oh. so necrotiz necrotizing fasciitis is basically when your fascia dies, when it, the, the tissue just dies. And it's a flesh eating disease. It's very rare, but basically it, it causes the, it's ma marked by death of the fascia. Necritis, necrotizing means dying or death. So, what you basically want to do is you want to start to restore the, uh, the health of the connective tissue, repair the health of the connective tissue. And the way you do that is with all the connective tissue building strategies that we've been talking about. Yes, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine is like a beginning. It's, just, it's like the minimum wage. It's like the basics. So the BTT and the Healthy Star Pack, actually. The whole Healthy Star Pack is important. But chicken soup, bone soup, my all-time favorite connective tissue building strategy, bone broth protein can help her as well. Uh, aloe vera can be helpful. Make sure she's using vitamin C, high doses. You, know, you don't want to take too, too much all at once because it'll give you little bowel problems, gas or bloating. You don't want that. So maybe a gram or two and then increase her dose over the course of days and weeks. Uh, to maybe four or five grams a day in, in divided doses. You can't make connective tissue without vitamin C. If you have a fascia issue, you have a vitamin C issue. And this is underappreciated with all of our health strategies. We don't, sometimes we forget the basics, and vitamin C is the basic building block. It's the, the rate-limiting step, we say in biology, uh, to the manufacturing of connective tissue. So make sure she's getting vitamin C. Uh, she may also want to consider the polyphenols that we've been talking about here, vegetables and veggie juices, which are always going to be good. And then don't forget the digestion digestive system connection. That's the core of everything is the digestive system. As, as the health of the digestive system goes, so does the health of the body. That means probiotics, the ultimate nightly, es uh, the ultimate e the ultimate nightly essence, I'm sorry. And then uh, uh, fermented foods, fermented veggies especially. Uh, digestive enzymes with meals can help her digest her food and help her get protein value out of her food and take it on an empty stomach. The ultimate enzymes also have pain relieving properties so she can use those as well. Um, uh, sugar is also a real bad guy when it comes to connective tissue, so making sure she's as best as possible, because we're all addicted to sugar, so as best as possible weaning herself off of sugar and using nutrients that should support sugar metabolism. As it turns out, things like zinc, 50 milligrams a day, magnesium, 2,000 milligrams a day, as well as the B-complex and chromium and vanadium all have very important benefits for helping with sugar, but zinc in particular uh, also will help her with her, uh, with her uh, connective tissue. Zinc is important for connective tissue. So is MS. SM sulfur. Don't forget about that. Maybe a thousand milligrams a day. Glucogel caps that can also help her. Uh, and then also, uh, in addition to the uh, B complex being important for sugar metabolism, the B complex are her energy vitamins, and that's also important for building tissue. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you go here, Elaine. Thank you so much for your call. Appreciate it. Hope we helped you out, and thanks for teaching us a little bit something there about uh, yeah. about the fascia. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Good to talk to you. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go to uh, Texas and welcome. Welcome, Daniel, to the Bright Side. Good morning, Daniel. Well, hello, Ben. Thank you for answering my call. I appreciate it. Sure. What's going I on? I have a problem with balance. Uh, oh, okay. I'm not a young guy, but I'm, I, I stagger a lot, and I've been to the ear doctor and physical therapist, and uh, okay. the ear doctor, he did a lot, but I don't think he still handle on it. I'm just hoping there's some sort of pharmaceutical yeah. or... Well, I can't give you pharmaceutical. Can... can't tell you yeah. about pharmaceuticals, but let me give you a couple ideas about balance. The most important thing to think, first of all, do, when you get up quickly or you get, uh, stand up from a sitting position or get out of bed or something like that, does it get worse? Well, uh, you're right about, uh, about sitting. Now, when I sit, I mean, when I get up, I'm all bent over and I stagger around a little yeah. bit and almost okay. trip on my feet. All right. Uh, that's a sign that there's something. When I go downstairs, man, I hold on tightly because it's scary. Okay. Well, a couple things are going on here. Do you, you don't have any ringing in the ears, do you? No, uh huh? Okay. So the first thing you want to think about when you have this kind of uh, uh, postural hypo, postural issues, and, and they call it, technically it's called postural hypotension. Your blood pressure kind of drops when you uh, stand up out of a sitting position. You get dizzy and woozy. Uh, the first thing to think about is your adrenal glands. Now, the adrenal glands are your stress glands, and there's lots of things that will that will tax or stress out the adrenal glands. The most important thing, first and foremost, is sugar. So you want to keep your sugar intake down. Uh, excessive yeah, amounts I'm a diabetic, of. I 
that's that's probably what you're looking at then. Uh, hypoglycemia, low blood sugar, can really wreak havoc on the adrenal glands. And when you're a diabetic, uh, sometimes you can end up with low blood sugar. High blood sugar can also wreak havoc on the adrenal glands. So it can go both ways. I already so, ever touch sugar because of my diabetes. Good for you. That's that's probably the best thing you could do. But you want to start working with the adrenal glands and with the stress hormone cortisol. So uh, first thing you want to do uh, for cortisol issues is balance out that cortisol with vitamin E and vitamin A. Uh, maybe 400 international units of vitamin E and maybe 20,000 international units of vitamin A. If you can get yourself some pregnenolone, P-R-E-G-N-E-N-O-L-O-N-E, pregnenolone, 100 milligrams a day. Can you spell that again? P P R E G N E N O L O. N E preg nen o loan 100 milligrams a day that can help uh, zinc is also important for the adrenal glands as is vitamin C 50 milligrams a day of zinc maybe two grams or so of vitamin C a day use your beyond tangy tangerine and the healthy start pack you might want to look at vitamin B12 shots the adrenal glands are very responsive to vitamin B12 in fact the entire B complex is important for the adrenal glands iodine is also important and then from a non nutritional standpoint slow D Deep breathing, especially before you stand up and as you're standing up, make sure you're practicing your slow, deep breathing techniques, not just when you're moving, when you're standing up, you know, getting out of a sitting position, but just during the day. Uh, under conditions of hypoxia, the adrenal glands go crazy. They, they rev up. So that is low blood oxygen. So making sure you're practicing your slow, deep breathing. Now, if you have any health challenges that are progressing, that also is going to put a stress on the adrenal glands. So you got to make sure that you're working with your other health challenges. That means you got to make sure that your diabetes is under control. And if you have diabetes, you probably have some blood pressure issues and some heart issues. You got to start working on the entire body, not just the adrenal glands. And that means calorie restriction. That means fat. Fasting. That means liquid nutrition, things like bone soup, as well as the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, protein smoothies, vegetable juices. And if you have any under, and you probably do, uh, most diabetics have uh, underlying digestive health issues. You got to work on those also. And that means doing all the things we talk about on the bright side for helping you with your digestive system. The things we just talked about, actually, the ultimate nightly essence, your ultimate enzymes, grinding your foods up in a food processor can help sometimes, liquefying your foods. I love that as a strategy for just overall health is getting concentrated amounts of nutrients in liquid formats. That way, if you have a digestive problem, you don't have to, you'll bypass those uh, digestive health issues. Were you going to say something, Daniel? Yeah. If it, can you spell that word again? P-R-E-G-N-E-L? P P R E G, like pregnancy, preg. Yeah. N E N, like nen. N E N. Yeah. O L O N E, olone. Just think three words. O N E, preg, nen, o, loan. And for anybody out there listening, pregnenolone, who's interested, pregnenolone also will help you relax. Pregnenolone will help you sleep. Pregnenolone balances out cortisol. Pregnenolone. That's a mouthful, I understand. Pregnenolone. Yeah. Love that stuff. Also, progesterone cream. And DHEA. I forgot about that one. DHEA, maybe 10 milligrams a day. That might help you also. Check that one out, too. All right. Gotta let you go, Daniel. And I apologize right, if I much. left you on. Take care, brother. I apologize if I left you on hold. Uh, but we'll get you tomorrow. If you want to call first thing in the morning, we'll get you uh, first thing on the program we'll get you first up on the bright side i'm pharmacist ben thanks for listening have a wonderful beautiful spectacular awesome day we'll talk to y'all later bye for now